a male patient, 58 years of age, visited our clinic due to a fallen crown onto one. The patient was recently diagnosed with osteoporosis and received a single IV infusion of a cluster eight months prior to the date of the examination. He is likely to receive a second infusion in about four months. Clinical examination revealed secondary caries and a fracture on the palatal side of the 2-1 with deep subgingival margins. Further radiographic examination shows a periapical radiolucency, probably related to incomplete root canal treatment. The tooth was deemed not restorable. Now back to the patient's medical history. Zaledronic acid is a potent bisphosphonate used for the treatment of Paget's disease and the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis. In the official information provided by the company, one can read that osteonecrosis of the jaw has been reported rarely in postmenopausal osteoporosis patients treated with bisphosphonates. On the basis of the existing evidence, however, it is very difficult to estimate what exactly this rarely means. The few studies that have actually examined the relation between IV infusion of bisphosphonates and osteonecrosis of the jaw place the incidence of osteonecrosis anywhere between 0.8 and 12%. However, there are some more interesting findings reported. First, it appears that the incidence of osteonecrosis increases with time exposure uh, of the patient. And from being 1.5% among patients treated for up to 12 months, it can jump to 7.7% for treatments of 37 to 48 months. Furthermore, although osteonecrosis is frequently related to some invasive dental treatment, it can also be related to active dental disease, such as periodontal pockets, untreated caries, and more. On the basis of all this and after consulting with the patient's physician, we proceeded with extracting to one. The extraction was followed by cleaning of the granulation tissue and the extracted tooth revealed the extent of the fracture as well as the potential periapical pathology. Healing after the extraction was uneventful and without any symptoms or complaints. So based on the treatment conducted that far, and also on the uneventful healing after the extraction, taking in consideration the wishes of the patient and consulting with the patient's physician, we decided to proceed with replacing the missing 2-1 with a single implant. The implant would be placed six weeks after the extraction with a delayed immediate protocol. It would be submerged and antibiotic prophylaxis was provided although there is currently no evidence that actually this might have any role to play in prevention of osteonecrosis-related complications. No further precautions were taken at this stage.